Finland's power market wasn't rattled by bad luck. It was ambushed by a trap built from obsolete climate forecasts and decade-long derivative bets that were never meant to survive a dry winter. Utilities hedged hydro output that never came, loading up on long-dated swaps modeled on rain that didn't fall. Now the Nasdaq Nordic market is choking on margin calls. Clearing members are buckling and cross-border exposures are dragging German power prices into the vortex. Industrial giants that depend on stable electricity costs are discovering their hedges might be turning toxic, while municipal utilities stare down collateral holes big enough to swallow their grid budgets. Regulators saw the warnings, buried them, and let politics smother the risk assessments that could have stopped this. Carbon credit funds tied to Nordic hydro benchmarks are wobbling as valuations slip. And if this is what one unpredictable winter can do, imagine the chaos when Europe's future grids swing on climate volatility that no model can hedge. It started with a winter that felt wrong the moment you stepped outside. In January 2025, southern Finland looked less like the edge of the Arctic and more like a wet parking lot in Amsterdam. Lakes that should have been locked in ice were slushy. Reservoir levels quietly slid down like a foam battery stuck on 5%. On paper, it was still winter. On the grid, it was the first crack in a bet that had been placed 20 years earlier. For years, Nordic utilities treated hydropower like a bottomless ATM. Water in, money out. The playbook was simple. Take rainfall data from the 80s and 90s, assume the sky would behave like a polite repeat customer and write decade-long electricity swaps on top of that. If you have ever promised your friend rides to school for the whole year while owning a car on 2% fuel, you already understand the risk management. The contracts sounded sophisticated. Forward curves, base load strips, seasonal hedges. In reality, they boil down to one belief. The rain will come. It always has. The models behind those trades were older than half the people scrolling YouTube on their phones. Climate science had moved on, the contracts had not. I remember sitting in a risk meeting in 2019 with a Finnish utility, listening to a senior trader tap a chart on the wall. He pointed at a blue line showing average inflows since the 1970s and said, this river has never failed us. He said it like someone who talks about a grandparent who always bails them out. Nobody in the room pulled up the newer climate projections, showing more dry winters, more weird swings, less stability, those slides stayed in forgotten conference folders. By late December 2024, snowpack across parts of Norway and Sweden was already down sharply from normal. Less snow in the mountains meant less meltwater for the dams feeding the Nordic grid. Hydro output is like a giant battery for the region. When that battery charges less, the whole system leans harder on imports and on those old derivatives that were supposed to protect against price spikes. Those derivatives sat on Nasdaq Nordic's power market, the quiet casino of Europe's electricity world. Utilities and industrial buyers locked in power prices for years ahead. Banks and clearing members sat in the middle like casino cages, making sure everyone posted collateral. As long as prices moved within the old climate comfort zone, everyone looked like a genius. Then the dry winter turned into a full statistical insult. Spot prices jumped. Forward prices for 2025 and 2026 jolted up as traders realized the reservoirs were not refilling like the textbooks promised. Suddenly, those long-dated short positions, written back when rain was cheap and endless on the spreadsheets, turned poisonous. Margin calls started hitting desks like cold morning alarms. A utility that had calmly collected premium for a decade now had to wire tens of millions just to keep its positions alive. Clearing members, the ones who were supposed to be the grown-ups in the room, watched their own risk dashboards go from green to screaming red as correlated bets all moved against the same old rainfall fantasy. What looked like boring insurance against volatility had turned into a loaded device aimed straight at the balance sheets of the very companies running the lights. And all of it rested on climate patterns that had quietly shifted while the contracts pretended time had stood still. An entire region had effectively staked its energy security on a weather story that the atmosphere had stopped telling years ago. The crack in Finland did not stay in Finland. Stress in a power grid behaves like a group chat leak. It jumps borders faster than anyone can hit delete. The moment Nordic prices blew out, 
Traders in Frankfurt and London were not staring at snow maps. They were staring at correlation tables. For years, big German manufacturers had done something that sounded smart. They bought their physical power in Germany, but used Nordic derivatives as a cheap insurance policy. Nordic Hydro had been the calm anchor of Europe. A steel plant in Essen or a factory near Stuttgart could hedge its 2026 power bill using contracts linked to rivers in Norway and reservoirs in Finland. On a whiteboard this looked elegant. Prices in the Nordics and prices in Germany usually move together. Like two kids tied with the same rope. If one kid suddenly falls off a cliff, the rope stops being a safety device. When the dry winter wrecked the old pattern, those hedges flipped. My friend Lena, who manages energy risk for a mid-sized German chemical plant, called me in early February 2025. She sounded less like a finance professional and more like someone who had just opened a surprise bill from a luxury hotel they never stayed in. The contracts that were meant to protect their power costs had become a fast-draining hole on the balance sheet. And it was not just factories. Municipal utilities in Hamburg, Munich and Cologne had been sold the same story. You are safe. You are boring. Use Nordic derivatives to smooth your budgets. These city-owned companies pay for streetlights, trams and public pools. Suddenly, they were being asked for collateral calls the size of their entire annual grid plans. In the background, another layer was snapping. Some climate-themed funds in Paris and Zurich had loaded up on structured products that mixed Nordic electricity, German power and European carbon credits. It sounded modern, green, diversified, perfect for marketing slides. But under the hood, many of those trades were just more ways of betting that rainfall in the north and industrial demand in the center of Europe would politely dance together. Regulators were not blind. The European Securities and Markets Authority, national watchdogs in Berlin and Helsinki, risk departments at central banks, they all had discussion papers on climate volatility and systemic margin risk. I have seen some of those reports. They read like worried diary entries. But reports do not win elections. Keeping power prices looking stable does. So the uncomfortable memos were parked in inbox folders with labels like long-term and strategic. No one wanted to be the person who walked into a ministry in 2022 and said, by the way, your market design is a bit of a house of cards. By spring 2025, the truth was out. Europe's electricity market was not a solid concrete block. It was a Jenga tower, built from cross-border hedges, municipal bets, and glossy green products. Finland had yanked out a wooden piece that every model swore was fixed in place, and the whole structure was starting to sway. When that carefully stacked market started to wobble, everyone kept staring at the missing piece. Finland, Nordic Hydro, one weird winter. But the real problem was not the block that moved. It was the whole tower, built for yesterday's weather and yesterday's risk. Here is the uncomfortable part. What shook Europe in 2025 was not some once-in-a-century freak event. It was a soft preview. Climate volatility is speeding up faster than the rule books. The atmosphere no longer behaves like a tidy spreadsheet from 1995. It behaves like a teenager with three energy drinks and no curfew. Hydro was built on the idea of seasons that repeat. Snow in the mountains, melt in spring, full reservoirs by summer. That pattern powered electricity contracts all the way from Oslo to Milan. But now the timing shifts, the volume swings, the extremes pile up. You can still build dams, but you cannot hedge a river that sometimes behaves like the Amazon and sometimes like a dried up creek in Spain. I remember a seminar at a university in Zurich in 2023. A climate scientist showed a slide with rainfall data from the last 40 years. The line did not drift, it jumped. She said very calmly, this is not noise, this is a regime change. Half the room nodded, the other half checked emails about new, long-dated power deals. Two years later, those deals met the new reality. The knock-on effect is brutal. Contracts that were supposed to spread risk across time now cluster it. When one dry year hits, hydro-dependent products, German industrial hedges, and even some carbon credit strategies all move in the same ugly direction. The fancy name for this is correlation breakdown. The simple version is this. Everything you thought would protect you decides to panic at the same moment. 
carbon markets are feeling it too. A lot of funds sold themselves as climate safe because they held allowances linked to cleaner power systems in the north. The pitch was clever. As Europe decarbonizes under deals like the Paris Agreement, demand for those allowances should stay solid. But if the benchmark region becomes unstable, the pricing signal twists. You are no longer just betting on emissions policy. You are secretly betting on whether Nordic rainfall behaves itself. The structures that were meant to calm prices start doing the opposite. Margin systems force players to dump positions at the worst possible time. Cross-market hedges transmit shocks from a dam in Lapland to a factory near Berlin and then into a pension fund in Rotterdam. It is like installing airbags in a car that sometimes punch the driver instead of cushioning the crash. What happens when the next decade looks less like a line and more like a heartbeat monitor? There will be winters with almost ridiculous surplus wind and sun. There will be years where reservoirs and gas storage both sit low at the same time. Old-style power derivatives assume the future wiggles gently around an average. The actual future looks more like on-off switches, either way too much or way too little. In that world, some utilities will find there is nothing left to buy that truly protects them. The tools on offer will still have impressive names and long-term graphs, but underneath they will be tied to climate patterns that no longer repeat. Insurance stops being insurance when the house itself keeps changing shape. The harsh truth is simple. Finland was not the main collapse. It was the fire alarm going off in the corridor. Europe's power markets are still priced, modeled and regulated for the climate of our parents, not for the physics of the next 20 years. The contracts on the screens are hedges for a past that is gone. The risk that is coming does not care how elegant those contracts look. It only cares that the water, the wind and the heat no longer follow the script 